Welcome to Conversations with Barbara. I'm Barbara Candelopoulos, and let me wish you first, everyone out there, our very best wishes for those of you who are trying to stay safe and to stay sane during these uncertain times. I am here on Zoom with women who are spending their time producing face masks, hundreds of them, so that the rest of us can steer clear of, of, of the uh, COVID-19. Um, so let's, um, let, let's turn then to Penny Doobie, who will explain to viewers exactly how this uh, this cottage industry began in Selmuth, involving so many women who are spending endless hours making face masks for all of us. Penny? Um, thank you, Barbara. And I would point out that we are just a small representation of the women who are out there sewing these masks. And there may be men also, but I'm not aware of any. Um, there are a lot of people all across the country in every community making masks to try to protect their friends and neighbors and na loved ones and communities. And it started here in Falmouth, sort of, it, it just grew up from the ground. And um, what some of us started to do was to notice that there were different programs and different masks and different people going on social media or in, um, Per, per, in person asking folks to, you know, do you know somebody who sews? Do you know somebody who has quilting fabric? Would you be willing to help me? And um, I'm part of a group called the Upper Cape Women's Coalition. And um, I started uh, to ask other women, I needed to find out for myself, what kinds of masks were people making them? Who were they making for them for? And how could we collaborate rather than tripping each over each other's toes? And so I tried to reach out through social media and through the, some of the women here and say, who do you know who's making masks? Who are they making them for? And so this is some of the women that I found. Um, and there's other groups that, that are here. And um, so it, it's nice for us to be able to realize that we are building a community and, and, and supporting our entire community by doing this together and reinforcing each other's work. Yes, yes. Well, let's turn to Jane. Perhaps, Jane, you can talk about the importance of these masks. It seems to me that now, early on, we didn't hear about the necessity for them. But now it's pretty clear that everybody should be wearing them. Tell us more about the, the um, from the medical aspect, how does that mask help? Well, the CDC was giving mixed messages. Initially, um, they weren't requiring people to wear them. And I'm a retired nurse with the Visiting Nurse Association. And it came to my attention the end of March that my fellow therapist, physical therapist and occupational therapist, as well as nurses, we're only be, being given one surgical mask, um, and that's the paper mask that you usually see, you might see it at a doctor's office. Yeah. Uh, and that had to last them the whole day, no matter how many people they saw. And I knew that was not right, and it really bothered me a lot, recognizing that this community was, was going to be certainly seeing a huge surge of COVID patients within a week or so and my fellow nurses weren't being protected so um got together some friends and i reached out to buy nothing falmouth which is the um the site on facebook and from that site i got people who would who loaned me a machine a brand new machine and with the, with the idea that i would teach her how to use it at the end of this because I had two machines and both of them broke down. And I bought another one and that broke down. It was really frustrating. And then somebody else um, gave me a good supply of uh, material and elastic. And then pressuring friends and the Encore group at, at Newcomers pitched in. So I had a handful of ladies that uh, we all made them all slightly a little bit different. Some of them like the elastic over the years. Some of them like the ties. I asked everybody to put some sort of nasal piece. You've got glasses, 
it fogs up. And uh -huh. so if you can squish down the mask around, the, uh, around your eyes, it's better. And it gives you a little bit more protection. So I got together and sometimes I just did all the cutting and somebody else did all the sewing. We just kind of, you know, very casually did this and did that. And some days you really crank them out and other days you couldn't. So we put a huge, huge push on for about 12 days, every single day. And at the end of that, it was before the surge. So it was the first week of, of April and we got everybody with at least enough masks that they could wash them. So the idea is that once we got the fabric, we used a high quality cotton that you mm -hmm. couldn't see through and had to be two layers. We didn't bother about filters, just, just tried to keep this simple as possible. We made them, we packaged them up, and I put in a little mask protocol and it read, read before use, wash in hot water and high heat. Nice. Uh, we want all the bleeding and the, and the uh, shrinking. Iron is needed, and it says use over your paper mask, okay, your paper surgical mask. Change mask between each patient's visit. Wash and dry and reuse. So and those were, those masks then you're speaking of were intended for professional nurses to use. Well, they're certainly not an N95, right. but you're, you're doubling the protection that you ordinarily have, and it's what you need. So I for see. us, my goal was to get it on the face as yeah. soon as possible, and then we, so we complete that goal. So a mask it was somewhat for under 200. Right. A mask for somebody who's going to go grocery shopping might simply be cotton. And uh, this how, is, good, how good you know, are those? These are the ones that you'll see in the grocery store. Uh, I mean, yes. these are the same ones. The only difference is that I'm putting a little bit of metal in them. I see. Um, I see. And people who have glasses, they, they want the metal. Yes. So they could pinch it. But, you know, there's different, there's lots of ways to skin a rat. Where we've, where I've personally come to is a mask is a mask is a mask. And there's not one mask, that, a cotton mask, whether it's got a filter in it or not, is still going to provide protection. And if we tell people that you have to have a filter or you have to have something in it, or the ones with this aren't good or whatever, it's it's going to cause a problem because we got all kinds of masks right, coming in and right. all kinds of masks out there. Yeah, some people so are we, be using bandanas. Yeah, right. And and the um, New England Journal of Medicine just today, my husband said, "You'll be glad to hear this. They have finally determined that it is not only that you're protecting the world from you, but it can stop you know the the uh, drop uh, droplets." But you're right, it, it, cleanliness is important. You can't just wear the same thing for three weeks. Right, yes. We did it. But I, th I think our viewers ought to know that these really help, that they're not perfect, they're not... They're not perfect, distance. and you still need social differences, yeah, distances. Yeah. But I'm glad to see that now everybody is being required to use one in public or strongly yeah, encouraged. Yeah. I have to admit that when Charlie Baker said he wanted everybody to have one, my production line went way down. And oh, I yeah. said, you gotta, you gotta get the first line out to the first responders and the people who are seeing patients. Family can come, can, 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 Kaylee can come next, but you know, it's hard to uh, compete with those adult children who say, Nana, we need the mass. Right. Mama, yeah. we need the mass. Right. And there so is- now, That raises another huge problem that now since everyone should be wearing them. How are you ever getting so many done? How long does it take, let's say, Mary, how long does it take you to make one mask? It really does vary, Barbara. Um, it depends on what style of mask that I'm making. Um, when I make the ones that are with the ties uh, made from fabric, it's quite a bit longer. Um, I, I can't get that many done. It's probably twice as long to do that, where I can probably make a batch of 10 of the other types of masks and get them done in a couple of hours, where this would be double the time, um, because the ties all need um, to be, they're coming a strip oh, and they all oh, need yes, to be yes. ironed out and yeah. then um, ironed uh, yes. to the center and then stitched and then assembled onto the mask. So it does increase the time quite a bit. 
Um, well, would you hold it, hold that up? That's so beautiful. It's so beautifully made. Well, you we can just have see. been very fortunate yes. to have um, donations coming in from people that do quilting, and some of the fabrics are just beautiful, which certainly makes sewing a lot more pleasurable when you're dealing with some really gorgeous fabrics. Right, right. And but I can see that they're very, they, they take time. Um, most of you are putting hours into this task, and, um, and it's certainly um, much appreciated. Let, and, uh, but how about, um, are there women who haven't seen a sewing machine since they made that apron in ninth grade? What are, are they finding a way to help out well, without being able to stitch? Right. Could I answer that? Because what we found was that we have more women who don't know how to sew than do. And so mm -hmm. we decided that we had to keep that precious time for the people who do know how to sew. So we've set up a, an assembly line with quarantine steps built into it so that we have runners who go out and collect fabric from people who want to do donate it and they can bring it to my basement and we keep it down there for a couple of days, then we wash it. And then that fabric is sent out to the cutters who can cut it and they make blocks that are the specific size. And we have these amazing women who make quilts who have cut strips so oh. that when Mary's making those straps, they're all the same width. And there you can use bias tape, you can use um, uh, elastic, a number of different things. But we've had, we have cutters and then they put together kits. So there's enough materials in there for 10 masks and you have the bodies and the material for the ties, and then that gets driven to the people who sew, and they make the masks. And so it's, it's a wonderful collaborative effort of people working together, and you don't have to know how to sew to do this. I think everybody who's here today knows how to sew, but there are many, many women who don't. And so we need people to, to help with those things as the demand is going to pick up. Yes, yes, I can see that that, that kind of uh, roundabout assembly line has been really important in saving, in saving time. Let's turn to uh, Eileen to see what your personal experience has been like. Has it been, um, have you found a way to make them fast or, or how has the production been from your end? Well, I have to admit, I have a background in sewing and used to work in a vocational school and taught sewing there. Oh, so I'm used wonderful. to industrial sewing techniques. And I'm also been lucky to have a husband who knows how to do canvas work. So we have two sewing machines going. That's uh, wonderful. Let me interrupt to say, it's important to say that machine stitching is not a female exclusively no. women's work. That's on, for sure. on, and you'll find some of the best stitchers are men and yeah. women combined yes. working together. But I was fortunate to find um, support through Falmouth Jewish Congregation. Elias Lieberman offered to fund us for anything Carrie and I wanted to produce for our congregation and beyond as outreach. And I remembered that Vicki Cullen ran the fabric sale in the Woods Hole Library this year. And she was good enough to supply us with our first 15 yards of fabric. So Carrie and I got together and started producing and an email was sent out to the, Inca, the congregation. And with about five helpers, we've put out over 225 masks uh, mm -hmm. within two weeks. Mm -hmm. And they've been mailed, delivered and picked up at my home as well. So I think we're ready to help out others at this point. I uh, could never have done it without Carrie. Uh, Joanne Fishbein in the, in the greater area has helped us a lot and three or four others. So it, it's, yeah, been a, yeah. it's been a great group to work with. Right, as Penny indicated, it really is a community effort. It, it seems to me that everyone has it really turns out to be quite um, an individual effort with 
various uh, ups and downs. Let's let's uh, ask uh, Carrie, what has your experience been like in making the masks? What, how, what sorts I started, of- I started making masks uh, uh, a week or two before it was advised to wear them because I have friends that work in the uh, medical field and they were complaining that they didn't have protection. So I started making masks that um, look like this. Yes, yes. And then I made masks for my family and friends and then got involved with Eileen with the, the congregation. So um, I've lost track of how many masks I've made, mm -hmm. but I'm also fabric hoarder, so I have plenty of fabric to, uh, to make masks. And, uh, and, your, and your experience, do you, you uh, yes, know, yes, 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 it certainly makes a difference to be able to, if you uh, know uh, how to, how to stitch uh, machines. Yes, that helps, my husband also helps me with some of it, but I also know how to do production sewing, so. Um, excellent, excellent. We're yes. so lucky to have found this. Who knew that we had so many talented uh, stitches, seams, uh, machine stitches in town? This is this is really really um, exciting. And uh, Marilyn, you have uh, your background in sewing uh, comes from um, comes from your mother. I understand. Tell us about that. It kind of comes from my mother. Well, my mother was a wonderful seamstress, and and in when I was in high school, she made uh, most of our clothes. And I had a good friend whose mother was also a, a wonderful seamstress. So my friend and I got together one day and we had both assumed that our mothers had taught each other how to sew, but neither of us knew how to sew. So we bluffed our way through it. And that's how we got started. And, and, it, and I, I made all my clothes for many years. Um, the reason I got into this, I think early on, I had a friend on Facebook who uh, we were talking about making knitted nests for Australian wildlife and we were working on that project which is really slow going um, to knit a nest and so she said she's a nurse and she said uh, now we have to make masks so that's where I started making masks my daughter works at Cape Cod Healthcare my niece works at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City and her job is to work with terminal COVID patients. So uh, I'm not giving her any masks. She needs to have the proper type of mask. Yes. yes. That provides services for um, people with intellectual disabilities. So I'm providing masks for them and friends. And uh, my mother died about, um, my mother died in 2007 and I inherited a huge box of fabrics and uh, an elastic from her. So she used to make porcelain dolls and she made very intricate, beautiful clothing for them. And that's, that was uh, my supply of quilting fabric. Since then, uh, I've bought a lot of fabric. <laughs> I enjoy, yes. I enjoy uh, putting it together and making things with it. So it's been rewarding. How wonderful that her fabrics are being put to such good use. And, uh, and um, also Laura, uh, Tell us about your experiences. Um, well, I started sewing as a kid. I too have, I have two of my mother's sewing machines. I just pulled out one. The receipt is still in it. She bought it used oh. in 1960 and paid 18 months, $5 and 11 cent installments. Um, it, it's not working really great. It hasn't been tuned up in a long time, but um, I started doing this myself. I'm part of the Falmouth Newcomers Club. I'm the assistant membership person. And I put a note out on our last newsletter saying if anybody wants to help sew, has donations. Um, and I've got about 10 people that sew with me. Uh, basically, I'm cutting up and making all these packets. I'm getting them out to people. Um, I have, I've given them to neighbors, friends. My son is still working. He's in a medical device essential type of job. So he's on the front lines every day too. Um, but I'm, you know, I, again, I just sit every day and get up. I'm making, I, I bought this little tool that makes bias tape. Um, that's, a, I'm waiting for twill tape to come in. Um, but in the meantime, I'm using this. It's a lot of work, a lot of material, a lot of time. But uh, once you get going, it's, it's great. 
Um, I will say one thing, I've done a lot of different masks and when you do the elastic, don't hit it with an iron. I've hit a couple of them and then they just fall apart. So now I'm taking them and putting, putting um, ties. I've got some with ties. Uh, I, I've got all sorts of different versions. Going through my, my giant box of fabric, I found a huge thing of brown, like camouflage fabric. That I is it's great. It, well, I think it's really ugly. And when I put them down, it looks like a baked potato. And I said, these look like baked potato masks, but I, I redubbed them chocolate masks. And I'm finding that people are, are asking for dark colors for men because they don't, they don't really love all this fun <laughs> stuff. So I'm actually, I'm going to make a whole bunch more of, of the, the brown. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to get stuff for men too. Um, yeah. That was a, I want to show you what somebody else, somebody, one of the ladies did. This is uh, to you, we have a lot of thick elastic, but it was hard to use it um, because it's sometimes the machine won't go over it. So this lady used it on the top like this. Yeah. And then on the bottom strings because the ears, if you wear those things around the ear for any length of time, they bug you. Right. So what's, oh. what's the length of that elastic? Um, it all depends on how far across you make this. Sometimes people are cutting nine, eight, or 10. Yeah. So it's anywhere from 14 to six, it's a 16 inches. Right. But they, I, I like these. I think they're comfortable. But another yeah. thing that we did for my daughter-in-law who works in yeah. a, um, an infusion center and she had 40 people in her staff, um, we got headbands and sewed buttons to them so that the, the, they could put yeah. their masks up on that. And that way, you know, they, it holds their hair back. I and couldn't visualize. And then somebody somebody showed me, it was like, a, somebody, uh, I don't know, like, it was a, like a piece. My husband, of, like, went, and my husband put them on his baseball cap. Headband. Yeah, like Mary's. I, I did this because oh, I wasn't very um, successful wearing a mask to the grocery store. Uh, oh. a couple of weeks ago and I thought the only way I could deal with it is if I could attach it to my hat so I stitched a button so show how it works right. up, onto the hat oh. and um, it works it's a lot easier because all you do is you just put the cap on and then you just attach it to the button on right the side oh that's brilliant I and made some headbands but I'm not really sure where it, it depends on well like the does it go down here? Does it go up okay, here? Do you have any show us? If, if you, there are, um, Laura, there are YouTubes that, a ton of YouTubes on where to put those buttons. Okay. And it's not absolutely halfway. It's a little one direction or the other and well, not I, up I, and down. I put it on and tried, it, it ended up the buttons were way down here. And I, <laughs> I kind of stopped doing that. I said, I'm just going to make the masks. Yeah. I, I, there's only so many I, things I can do. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious why you're not using cut up t-shirts for the ties because there's, you don't have to stitch them and they're so easy. Doesn't it unravel? No. no. It a rolls on itself. And it closes on itself. And there, Carrie has one right there. You just and cut it an inch and a half straight okay. across like the hem all the way and then pull on it and it makes the perfect elastic stretchy tie somebody use the top of um knee-high nylons she had a whole box of them yep and she just cut off the tops and used it as a almost oh. like a um, a ponytail well, elastic Falmouth village association will donate all their leftover t-shirts from the road race if anyone wants to cut oh. them up and Mary, Mary, what you said earlier about how, how time consuming it is to stitch the straps yeah is, it is a great innovation, it is. wouldn't you think, Mary? Yeah, I think, you know, we've actually been trying a lot of different things. We've done twill, we've done uh, different types of ribbon, the heavier ribbon, not the silky type. Yeah. Um, I so it really makes a huge difference in the amount of time. And see, we don't, when we make them, we quite often, a lot of us make them in batches. So we're not, it's hard to say when you ask me how much time one of them takes, it's kind of tough because we kind of have like a system where we're putting a bunch of them together at one time um, just to try to uh, make things move along a lot quicker and stuff. Right. It, it seems to me that, uh, that maybe, uh, maybe the group of you more women need to have a kind of um, 
place where you can meet to share these ideas. We're doing it here and it's useful, but the we're going to have a Zoom wine party. There's lots of these <laughs> Well, actually, Barbara, um, I participated in a Zoom uh, sew-a-thon last oh. week, and that was yeah. um, by Mass for Humanity. And women actually did share a lot of different um, things that they were doing to either increase productivity or to make the mass better. And one of the interesting things, and I don't know a lot about it, one person was using a, a salt solution to increase um, the effectiveness of the mass. But like I said, I don't really know anything about that. Um, it's just that that was what one of the persons was doing. Yeah, but but I I think Penny, you sent it to me, the little label that I stick on the outside of the bags that say, these are homemade masks, please wash before wearing. So please my point that. is, why, why bother with that yeah. step? if you're going to wash it anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the I, this is what we, we had originally been in touch with the Medical Reserve Corps. And the Medical Reserve Corps is, was formed after 9-11 and it's volunteers across the country and they, are, they respond to emergencies. And so they were, their suggestion was that we put something in with every mask that says this will provide some protection. And this was before this, you know, the, the New England Journal of Medicine and CDC came out and supported masks. But the, the issue is that um, all the masks that we've been working with and that I've seen from anybody here are really wonderfully made and they have been kept safe. Mm. Um, any place that they go to when they, before, when they get put into the bags, like they go into a kit of 10, like this, and that sits here for at least two or three days before it goes out the door. If it's a safety precaution, it makes people feel better to wash them before they wear them, um, and it's it's something that helps them get used to the idea that this is a living virus, and you need to protect yourself from it beyond just wearing gloves or just w putting a mask on the same mask all the time. And that's the reason why when the masks are made, it's recommended that they have two different fabrics. So you're wearing one side next to your face. My right. first mask I made, I made inside out. I mean, it was <laughs> the wrong side of the fabric. It was very functional, I can wear it. Um, and then I made a whole bunch of them with the same decorative fabric on both sides, you know, and so it's a learning process. So there is a correct way to wear a mask. The, you want the pleats not to form a pocket because you don't want the germs to get caught in there. So we want the pleats to go down. What I did on mine is I put my name on there and I wrote top with an arrow so that I, I can just look and put it on. Brilliant. Mm. Perfect. So the, the pleats are going down. Yeah. But I see that Irene, ha ha Eileen has one up. And so, you know, it, it's... A denim shirt. I've been using den lightweight denim shirts that people, the men love them. So yeah. I asked them to donate a denim shirt and I can get about 12 masks out of it. And really? sometimes I even have embroidery over the pocket and I'll put it on one side of the mask to customize it for people. So they can feel like they're wearing their own logo. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I have yeah. heard. I have heard too because I sometimes wear um, glasses, and I did go out the other day to do, go to the market and the post office and stuff, and it was all fogging up. And I saw on the news um, it was a doctor saying if you took a tissue and put it in there, mm -hmm. that, oh. that helps to absorb the moisture. I haven't tried it yet, but just just so people know. Yeah, that, I, I've tried doing um, my first round of um, masks for both the same fabric on each side. I'm not doing that. And then I tried adding a twist ties with a little right. piece of felt and that was a huge disaster. <laughs> I, had to, I had to undo all of that. All of the um, fabric just raveled in the washing machine. It was, it was a nightmare, but I have just ordered a bunch of those chenille sticks, the pipe cleaners. I'm going to, why won't the grocery stores donate those twist ties to us? I saw them at Shaw's. They have buckets of them. They, they're not, they're not strong enough. You put it in the washing machine and, and some of them have paper on them. The paper disintegrates uh, and okay. they twist all up. 
they're not heavy duty enough. And there's, so, we have to be careful about the metal that's in those because right. some of that metal will rust. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then you've put all that time into a mask and it's going to. Yeah. Not putting it in my, making the holder, but not putting anything in. And I'm leaving that up to the person. Good idea. I, I guess I'm using the chenille pipe cleaners. I bend them on each end. They're six inches long. They're pretty cheap. At uh, And I haven't had trouble. I've washed, washed mine and it's been okay. I don't know if it'll be okay for six months, but it's been yeah. okay so far. I'm using pipe cleaners. It seems to me that what we have here is what, what you were talking about, Mary. We're having a wonderful chance to compare notes and to pick up tips that are going to help a lot. But probably, uh, Mary, the um, the the uh, Zoom that you you participated in. How many people were, were there? Um, I think there were about sixty five people. Um, yeah. I actually ended up. It was actually quite fun because um, a friend of mine who lives in Alaska, I had sent her the information, and she was very interested. And I haven't seen her in several years, so it was really uh, cool to see her on. Uh, the the Soathon, uh, even though oh. she was on page three, there were so many of us. They had to go to the oh, third I'll page. To, to see it her. seems to me that we need something like that here in yeah. Selma for all of you to. It's a lot more efficient than just emailing, so that could probably be set up. I don't know if if it's the kind of thing that Channel Thirteen wants to show the general audience. It seems to me a pretty a private kind of thing, so. But it's an idea. I think it's a great way for you to become more efficient. Uh, obviously, the work you're doing is very time consuming. <laughs> I, I, I'm just um, in awe of the donation you're making of your own personal time, given all the other things there are. Also, it sure is a um, testament about women's problem solving ability. We, really, you. You every every obstacle gets a finds a solution, which is really great. I got sheets, ladies. I got sheets coming. I mean, my house looks like a mill store. <laughs> um, I we're running out of the the nice quilting cotton, but somebody said that she would go through her stash. We've got sheets. I have ordered twill tape because somebody said that was a great idea and gave yeah. me a source. Yeah. I've ordered bias tape, which they was supposed to be here three days ago. And they said, maybe it'll be here Monday. But I got like 50 yards of red and 50 yards of black because some people were liking that. I know somebody has a stash of elastic. I mean, we can share these things so <laughs> that- I have elastic. Yeah, I mean, so if it, it's, we, we, ha we have two drivers who have volunteered and they go around from, um, you know, they call me in the morning. I feel like a taxi company. <laughs> and, you know, they have, they take little bags and put them in people's mailboxes or they take fabric from here to there or they pick stuff up and sometimes they pick up and drop off on the same day. Um, and they call and it's, it's working so far. We're going to need as we move forward because at this point, the word's just getting out. And we need hours, we need cutters, we need drivers, you know, as we move forward. And then we don't know how long this is going to last, so that... It's not going to be quick. The sheets, must they be straight... Uh, uh, cotton. Co uh, they have to be cotton. Cotton yeah. sheets. Many sheets cotton are... Uh, fabric, um, straight, and, pure cotton. Yep. All right. I've heard it should be 600 squares per inch or higher. It's the denser the fabric, the better it's going to be. Right. But a lot of them, a lot of them, you don't know. It's a, it's a donation that doesn't have a tag on it. Right. Um, I got a bunch of like, um, like um, blankets, like cotton blankets. And I'm like, I can't, I can't really use those. Well, but, but we can take those things when we're done. I mean, you know, I've got a bag like that too, of flannel sheets that you can see through, Yeah, I mean, you know, and I'm figuring, you know, at some point down the road, we can collect those and take them to someplace and, and give them away. Yeah. Um, the other thing is carrying. Um, it would be nice if there were a clearing house for you, a clearing house where. <laughs> and carrying. We had a, um, an, 
a, a volunteer, a, 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 a wonderful offer from Carrie to tinker around with kids' masks because we did, you know, all, we were all making pretty much the same size masks. And um, Carrie, can you talk about what you were, the group you're working with? Um, there's, this style has uh, patterns for three to six year olds and seven to 12 year olds. And also I'm going to adapt uh, one of these kind for smaller faces. Um, I'm gonna to try to get my granddaughter to be uh, a guinea pig or no, something. Yeah. I could use a dog, I guess. I don't know how I'll figure it out. But um, so the scraps are smaller than the standard size for this. And I will just uh, adjust it and, and cut. So that has to be cut out like two or three at a time, but it'll work. And then I'll use these for the ties instead of elastic. So that they well, if adjust. you if you get the dimensions down, because I have pieces of fabric that are too small for what I'm making, or you know the wrong size, and you know some they're smaller, and they if I had the dimensions could work on that as well with these kind of leftover pieces of fabric that aren't big enough for the yeah. mass I'm currently making. Well, I can, uh, Penny, I can email you the patterns, and then you can distribute it. You yep. know, email it. Yep. We can do that. I yesterday I had Eleanor, who's our our runner, take this whole bag of scraps over to Carrie because I thought, oh good, somebody's gonna do something with them. Yeah, um, a lot of people do a lot. Yeah, and a lot of people are asking for masks for their kids, at least in our congregation. Yeah, uh, they want them, but very young kids, like one year, two years, and younger, should not have masks. Oh, it's a choking hazard. Oh, that, that good good luck good. getting them to keep them on their face anyway. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, for purposes of uh, Channel 13, if this goes on the uh, TV station, uh, I wonder if it's important to bring up the uh, question of some funding. For example, if, um, if we say that uh, any contributions can be welcome, I'm particularly thinking about the Jewish congregation Funding. They're funding those of you who are making masks. Is that is that some is that appropriate? How, how? Well, this is how they worked it. The masks are being sent out at no cost to anyone within the congregation, and it's being underwritten by the rabbi's discretionary fund. If anyone would like to make a donation, they may yeah, to the right. discretionary fund. And, discretionary fund. I think I think a number of us have funded it different ways. I mean, right. and I know a lot of us had fabric stashes and, you know, I've, I've been working mine down. I know that, you know, some, a lot of the other ones have been, there are people, and this is a group, um, an individual within the group decision. I mean, there are people who are going to call and say, can I buy two masks? And, right. and what we've been doing, one woman called and said she has relatives who cannot get them. They live in New York City and she was desperate. And my suggestion to her was, can you get us a gift certificate to Joanne's Fabric? Ah, so good that, idea. It's not money moving around, it, right, right. It, it's access. And so she gave us a $50 gift certificate mm -hmm. to Joanne's. Now, you know, I've been buying the tape and the, all of those things myself, but it's, it's going to be a discretionary thing about, you know, who feels they need to be reimbursed for stuff. I gave our driver 20 bucks for gas because, she, you know, I don't know if she needs it or not, but it seems fair. Um, but people are going to have to make their own decisions. It's going to be hard, Barbara, to have a one yes. central yes. funding agency. Right. Mm. Well, I know I've had a couple people that have given me money to help fund. I've mailed things out myself. I've, I bought yep. fabric. I was doing interfacing to begin with. I have bought yep. elastic and twill tape, um, you know, and I don't mind, I don't mind doing it yep. at all, but it was just kind of nice that somebody thought, oh, here's some, here's a little bit of money to help you out. They thought mm -hmm. that was very And, cool. and when yeah. we put the thing up with the web, with the email address, and I'm not sure how it, which group, whether it was um, Neighborhood Falmouth or the Senior Center or somebody, but there are people who are online more often than others. So there was a gentleman who, you know, got right on, 
email came right away and he, you know, we talked about where he could pick it up or what could it be dropped on his porch. And he said, you know, I want to give, you know, I, I don't have much money, but I want to give you a couple of bucks for these things. You know, it, it's, that's, that's a very generous thing on their part. I mean, but the, the goal is to get these things, the faces of Falmouth covered. Yeah, exactly. I've had, I've had exactly. people ask, do you sell these? And I said, no, I don't sell them. I, I, if you need it, I will give it to you. Right. No, but the fact yeah. remains that fabric is expensive. And yeah. even accessories, the, the twine, the, mm. um, all that, it, it's costly. That stuff isn't cheap. And so <laughs> in the long run, with all that you've got to do, it could turn out to be burdensome. So I would, I would just think that, that, some, that any, any funding, even if some of them could be sold and the profits put well, back. I know in the newcomers group, I put a, a notice out there uh, saying, this is what I'm doing. If you want to sew, if you don't sew, but you've got fabric or elastic or whatever. And I, I got donations, not only through the Falmouth Newcomers Club, but I put it out there on Facebook. And I have friends from the past that saw it on Facebook and mailed me sheets, brand new 100% mm -hmm. okay. cotton okay. sheets. They, I want to help. And, you know, if you just, I wouldn't even mind that. Just, it doesn't have to be money. Just give right. us the fabric. Give All us right. the elastic. Laura, so, can I ask you a question? Sure. Where did you get the twill tape? I, I'd be interested in getting that. It's a place called Open Tip, O-P-E-N-T-I-P. -E it's in Needham. Um, somebody found it in it. I think they make, I got like 210 yards or something for, I don't know, 20 some odd bucks. Right. And, they, and, and since you were so gracious in sharing that, they now have a delay. I'm, I, and I said that to somebody else. I said, if you're going to get it, do it now because I'm putting it out there. <laughs> so going back to funding, okay. I'll go back to what Penny said. It's an individual, funding is an individual thing. The thing is, uh, I'm firmly convinced that there are plenty of women in Falmouth and on Cape Cod who have fabric stashes. They just haven't been hit up for fabric. I and old sheets, old right. sheets. Yep. You know, and, and, the, and the, you know, they're out there. There are also people who there. Um, there, there was a woman who ha I had reached out to Jane when she, when her machine was broken. My there calls. was one woman who had a a loaner. She said, "I'll loan you my machine." There are older women who have machines. They haven't used them for thirty years, but they would loan them. I so, have that are loaners that are willing to give away to yeah. use. So if we find people that, you know, there, there's ways to make this work. It's going to take some time. I think Does I have, the service I center have, have any old you. clothing they'll give us from the uh, thrift shop? The service center gave us um, some sheets um, and they didn't, I can ask about the, the shirts um, if that's something that, that you want, because we have a co connection with somebody who can get in that door. All the thrift shops, we should check out all the thrift shops in town to see what they could give us. That's an idea. Well, see, the, and that's, um, that would go, to, that's another sort of thing. Mary was, had volunteered to sort of try to find out where people need them. And if we had somebody who could sort of herd up the provisioning part of it with, you know, where can we get sheets? There was a woman right in the very beginning of this thing. I put something up on some Facebook page. I don't remember which one. And she said, oh, I have sheets. I went to her house and the whole back seat and back of her station wagon was full of black plastic bags full of sheets. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's stuff out there. All right, so I think maybe if we, uh, instead of uh, talking about funding in terms of money, m simply making making people out there, the viewers who are watching Channel 13, if you have any fabric, if you have any uh, whole uh, entirely 100% cotton sheets, yeah. if you have binding, if you have elastic, sewing oh, machine needles, oh, yes. Red. Uh, Red. Red. Red face masks that men prefer. Uh, Denim. I say, yes, I was going to <laughs> say. And, and solid colors. Yeah. Solid. 
solid yeah. colors. And we, have so, we have so many things that are, you know, two right. different prints and right. yep. pretty. A lot of the guys <laughs> want brown or blue. Right. Or <laughs> black. I, Somebody asked me black. LL to see if they'll donate any fabric to us. Who's that? LL Bean. I think we should ask them if they'll give us any fabric. Okay. That's, that's great. great. And Eileen, I, I think it would wow, that's brilliant. that. <laughs> I've, I've worked with them before. Great. And we could also put out that on the TV show if there are any manufacturers that would like to, because who knows who's in town here, who would like to contribute um, any materials that would be appropriate. There may be bolts of fabric somewhere that we could I, use. As a group. We're working hard together, and but we, we're going to need a lot more hands and a lot more hearts to make this work for Falmouth and for all the people we care about and just keep safe. And we need people who can step up and help us at all stages of this through driving and cutting and sewing and donating fabric and helping us to get the word out. We have an email address for people who are interested in helping and also who might want or need masks, and that is masksforfalmouth at gmail.com. And we would really welcome all of you to join us in this community to cover the faces of Falmouth. Even though this is helping us all to deal with the stress, I think, of what's going on right now, it definitely fills our day and gives us a purpose. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Um, it's often been said that we can uh, we can do with anything provided we find meaning meaning in the experience. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara and Mar Marilyn. I feel better. Thank you very much for joining us and for all of the work that you're doing on behalf of all of Falmouth and and beyond. And um, good good um, good luck in, with the work you're doing. And um, thank you again. And viewers of Channel 13, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.